Greetings folks, uh, this video is a follow-up to my initial flight video which went very well, it's a lovely little plane I uh, just thought I'd go in closer, have a look at the details of the plane, show you all the extra bits and how I set up INAV as well uh, So what can we see, we see we've got a nice big battery bay there That's an 18650, you could easily fit two 18650s in there, uh, 4S or a big uh, 4S LiPo as well plenty of battery bay plenty of space for flight control board and um, extra gear uh, GPS in this little pocket here and another spare pocket here for whatever you want to put in there nice little uh, motor mounts here that you can take off quite easily to chop and change motors if you want to uh, we get spare props there they are there uh, what else do we get aileron servo arm covers and little sticky pads here's the alternative nose for putting an HD um, FPV system in uh, very clever little design uh, that nose comes apart and it has sort of this rail slide in here that you can slide this little uh, platform in which has holes for the Vista unit or uh, air unit or uh, and the little antenna holder as well all very well thought out get a couple of little spaces for the camera mount there um, and we get the little side panels for the camera mount as well get this little angled camera mount I guess that is not too sure really but uh, yeah it's all very interesting stuff these are the little wing retaining clips that come separate and you have to screw them into the ring to the wing let me just demonstrate that push the little button there and that releases it you can see it sitting in there that is that little thing there and you just screw it into the body little uh, retaining clip little retaining clip that you just unscrew and there's a spar going through there they even give us spare stickers for the ESC wires they do seem to be coming off a little bit CG marks here 9 gram digital servos ball link push rods something to note is that the control horns are set back from the uh, in the hinge which means you get a little bit of automatic mechanical differential on the ailerons on the elevator it's the other way up uh, it's set back again but it's on the top which means you get reverse differential in the in the elevator but that's not uh, um, as much of a problem now let's go in close on the flight control board so it's an Atom RC F405 Navi flight control board same as that was on the swordfish there is my little light tower ELRS beta FPV um, receiver plugging into UART2 there that just sits wherever it wants to sit over here we have the LEDs sit, plugging into the LED slot there uh, and let's start from this side two ESC's are plugged into S1 and S2 uh, the left and right ailerons S3 and S4 and the elevator into S5 and we have GPS over here going out to uh, the side pocket also provide cabling for the DJI units or the HD units uh, and they can plug into there and supplied by 9 volts by default and there's the little USB board over here which in a silly move was actually stuck over this uh, servo uh, uh, servo wire hole there just a bit of a silly move okay so let's hook it up to the configurator and I'll show you the changes I made to the INAV setup all right connecting up to my computer via USB-C it's connected there and into INAV uh, now I have flashed it to INAV 6.1.1 so that we get all the benefits of, of that uh, the latest system which is really worth upgrading to and that means that I can put my own setup on there um, rather than the stock setup I have moved the push rods uh, from the outer hole into the middle hole on the elevator and the ailerons because the throws were outrageously large as they came uh, and that's worked out pretty well first of all I'll show you how it was set up from the factory uh, it was already calibrated uh, and they had uh, version on our version 6.0.0 on it 
it was already calibrated, so I can use these uh, values for the accelerometer calibration and just plug them into the new system. I think uh, they may have probably they could well have just been copied from another model, um, but don't really know. The mixer was set up with 80% uh, weight on the ailerons and elevator, uh, and that's probably because they had them they had the throws way too big. Uh, this was just an attempt to uh, reduce the throws a little bit. Now, in the outputs page, the ESCs are BL Heli, and they can handle D Shot 600. I really don't know much about these different protocols. I've always used, just used standard, but uh, comes as D-Shot 600, so that's where we leave it. And the mid midpoints had already been adjusted somehow. I'm sure they haven't, well, they haven't flown this plane, so these are copied from another setup, uh, and I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Anyway, I, I reset these all to 1500 so I can start again and do my own um, servo trims. In the ports page, we have uh, receiver on UART2, GPS on UART4, and um, they've set it up for a video transmitter that can handle uh, TRAMP protocol, which I'm not using, so that's another thing that I'm changing as well. Configuration. Configuration. Uh, I, I may need to change that current meter scale. We'll, uh, we'll have a look at that uh, down the track when I do a, a little bit more flying. This board doesn't support soft serial or CPU based serial ports so uh, there's no need to turn that one on. Analog RSSR, RSSI, uh, if you've got a receiver that handles analog RSSI you can use that I suppose. Black box, um, they didn't have air mode permanently turned on so I've changed that in mine and uh, I only have one profile so I don't want to be able to change profile selections with uh, transmitter sticks and here's the um, video transmitter setup details that uh, are not relevant for mine. These are the PIDs. I did mess with the roll feed forward a little bit to tame that down. These are the rot rotation rates here, which are very, very high. I, I think 300 for pitch is way too high. I don't know many planes that can um, do a, a con complete loop in close to one second. Um, so I've, I've uh, toned them down a little bit as well. And fixed wing level trim. This is sort of the angle of uh, angle of attack that you want the plane to fly at. And uh, I did try their default set of six degrees nose up, and that seems to be good. One thing I often play with is the cruise throttle, just to reduce that down. I, I start with 1350. Uh, that means 35% throttle for cruise mode uh, or for uh, navigation modes, and that works with me just to uh, so you're not flying faster than you need to or uh, sucking too much current but uh, yeah I set mine to 1350 and it worked very well for me. Return to home settings are pretty good. Serial receiver provider, Crossfire or SBUS or whatever you're using. I'm using ELRS so I'm leaving that as CRSF. Modes, well these are uh, not, not compatible with my radio so uh, of course I needed to load my own modes, um, but and I think most people will adjust them to their own channels and own modes as well. GPS was set up correctly because when I connected it all, all up with a battery, uh, this total messages was counting up, and out in the field it acquired satellites very quickly, and I was flying with at least 20 satellites most of the time, so that's, that's pretty impressive for the little, I think it's a BN220 um, GPS sensor possibly. I just left these settings as they were. I often change that to U-Block 7 and used Galileo satellites, uh, but I'm not too sure whether this GPS sensor can handle that, so I just left it at U-Block 7, and it acquired satellites very quickly, so uh, leave it like that. That is absolutely fine. So now let's go and have a look at uh, how mine is set up currently. So this is my current setup. Uh, on INAV 6.1.1. Calibration had already been done and because it's in the plane I didn't really want to do it again so I just grabbed the original CLI uh, diff and if you look for the accelerometer cal calibration numbers here we are here uh, and copy them and post them into the CLI and save them then that will perform this calibration for you. 
And I'm just assuming that these numbers uh, are relevant for, for my particular board. Who knows? I'm not too sure about that. Mixer, I have increased all my weights up to 100 just because that's where I like them to be. I don't want to be um, not using part of the resolution of my survey. So. And this is kind of taken care of by the repositioning of the push rods in the servo arms, the inner holes. As I said, I re set all of these to 1500 and I've been out for a fly. So this is the new servo trim uh, positions, midpoint positions. Um, so I'll leave them at, at that because it was flying nice and level. Ports, I've just got rid of the tramp protocol in there. I don't need that for my video transmitter. If I put my um, DJI system on, I will then select that one there. Uh, but that's, uh, that's for the future. I'm not doing that just yet. Configuration, because the board is uh, rotated 180 degrees in your, you have to e enter 180 degrees here so that no INAV knows uh, that the board is facing the back instead of the front. As I said earlier, I've turned on permanently enable air mode, turned off profile selection because I've only got one profile, uh, and continuously trim servos on fixed wing gives you those new midpoints for aileron and elevator servos to uh, make it fly nice and level. Fail safe, basically return to home. Pit tuning, uh, for the pit tuning, uh, I don't use auto tuning. Uh, I've, I've found it's, uh, I've always had more success just manually tuning. So uh, the way I do it is uh, just adjust the feed forward for roll and pitch so that the, um, the throws are about 80% of manual when you switch to acro. And rates, uh, I've reduced it to 300 for roll and 110 for pitch. I may play with them a little bit more. Uh, but as I said, it was flying nice and, and docile. I could do reasonable flips and rolls. But the model probably can do faster flips and rolls than that. So then, then you would play with these things to reflect those rotation rates. Cruise throttle, I dropped down to 1350. And that gave a nice uh, general cruise of about... Uh, Four and a half, five amps, which is perfect for this little model. Didn't change anything else there. I never use auto launch. I, I'm much happier launching manually, so I forget about those sorts of things. Receiver uh, Express LRS, so you choose the CRSF serial receiver protocol. There are my modes. They're just uh, what I like to use. So you would use your own modes, GPS uh, and OSD. I've got my own OSD set up. Now, because I'm not using HD or DJI on this particular craft at the moment, you won't see the DJI OSD settings here because I didn't enable it back in the ports. Someone asked me about this uh, just the other day. You have to have DJI FPV VTX uh, enabled there on a UART uh, before you get the option of setting up the DJI screen and that will appear down here uh, with all the items you can choose for DJI. So there we go, that's uh, my setup and the throws I ended up with, I never usually measure these things, but it's, it's good to know. Anyway, after I adjusted to 100% and put the uh, push rods into the, the middle holes, ailerons 11 millimeters up and down in acro mode and 17 millimeters up and down in manual and elevator was, uh, about 14 up and down in acro and 20 up and down in manual. Uh, and that is plenty for a nice flying experience. Uh, and you can ramp them up a little bit further if you want. You can put the push rods out to a further out hole. And once you get used to the plane, that would make it a, a real little hot dog, I think. Anyway, that'll do for the moment. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.